there was a very strong um, desire uh, to see to see us focus individually in our own countries as well as collectively to focus on getting growth back to normal and in fact raising uh, potential output growth in the global economy and a very strong desire to see a return to some normality in jobs to reduce the still very high levels of unemployment in the advanced economies and to create new jobs in the emerging economies. So growth and jobs was a, a very strong focus of our discussions. The effect of lesser monetary policy in industrialized countries. Whether you look at the MENA uh, transition countries, for instance, or whether you look at some of the uh, advanced economies uh, in, uh, in the Eurozone, or whether you look at Japan, uh, or whether you look at the United States uh, and some emerging market economies as well, every uh, policymaker is keen uh, to develop jobs and to respond to the uh, demands of the young population in particular. are intended to extend their monetary easing. So I wonder if IMF... One piece of information, uh, we have uh, yesterday concluded a staff agreement with Tunisia. So Tunisia will be another uh, country in the Middle East uh, where we will be uh, helping out and, and supporting that country's uh, uh, traveling into uh, economic recovery and, and, and stability. So that's, uh, from my perspective, certainly a piece of good news uh, from yesterday's developments. Slovenia, we've got 25% unemployment in Spain. The French economy is doing well. Monetary policy accompanied by structural reforms that give a chance to young people to get jobs, structural reforms that help companies to upgrade and improve productivity is much more likely to succeed. And fiscal policy that, that takes place together with structural reforms rather than fiscal policy focused on short-term adjustment objectives is also uh, more likely to succeed in enhancing confidence over the medium term. Makes reference um, to eventual exit from monetary expansion. Is that aimed at any particular 